I was a boy, I wished I could fly. Me too. So did I. Out the window and over the trees. High as a cloud and lighter than air. Then loop to loop and up to the stars. I dreamed about flying all the time. What? Girls dream. <laughs> <laughs> up to the stars. I like that. Me too. Eventually, of course, we dream other dreams. We change. We grow up. It always happens. Nothing is forever. That's the rule. Everything ends. And so our story begins. Oh. <laughs> Supposing now all these robes and planks are now the British Empire, and we are lords, captains, mothers, orphans, sailors, pirates, and use your thoughts to hoist the sails and deck the ships awaiting us this early gray and misty dawn in 1885. A crucial year in the reign of Her Majesty Queen Victoria. God save her! <laughs> Who by her grace had only just knighted a new peer of the round. Lord Leonard Astor, dedicated minister to the Queen and devoted father. To Molly Astor whose mother flew up to heaven when Molly was only six years old. In the years that followed, a nanny was employed to care for Molly and provided the essentials of young womanhood. <laughs> While taking her with him on each royal mission, Lord Astor gave Molly a life few young girls would normally know. A life that made her insatiably curious, insufferably bright, and pretty much friendless at school. Friendless? <laughs> friendless? You mean like, leave me alone. Orphans! Most useless creatures on earth. Look at them. Cast out by mothers who can't feed them or love them. Much as I hate to lose you, Mule. And you, and you, I won't stand in the way of opportunity. Here's to your trip on the ship. Oh, what trip? <coughs> what ship? Sorry, I'm lost. Me too. Boys? We're, We're lost. lost. Boys? And so it was on the brink of a new adventure that three filthy orphans and Lord Leonard Astor, his friendless Molly, and her nan and Mrs. Bombrick, journey at dawn to the docks of Portsmouth, where two drunk are delivered to two ships sharing the very same dock. Two trunks deliberately similar to each other in their trunkness. One of them containing a precious cargo belonging to the Queen. <sighs> to be accompanied by Leonard Astor aboard one of the ships, a spanking new frigate commanded by Leonard's old school chum, the legendary Robert Falcon Scott, captain of the Wasp, fastest ship afloat, and bound for the remote kingdom of Rundoon. The other chum, full of sand, courtesy of me, Bill Slank, captain of this other ship, the Neverland. A slower ship. And long in the poop, a merchant ship taking a longer route to Rundoon just to be safe. And, while nobody's looking, I'll just mock the Queen's trunk, the one supposed to go on the walks. Then, at the last second, all ashore who's going ashore, I'll swap them. Get this trunk on board the Neverland, you garbage! And I'll sell these boys into slavery. Cheer up, lads, you're off to run to to be helpers to the king. Food for snakes, more like it. Credit boys coming aboard! Make your call, say your goodbyes. Goodbye to who? There's nobody who cares. Which is why I hate, I hate, I hate grown-ups. So your car goes, start your play, adieu, adieu. Get that trunk in my cat in the salt junkies. There's wind in the floor. Let Daddy, the cat, 
the shit cat! Oh, it's like a sign! Here, puss, puss! Molly, careful! It's all right, Daddy. Kim's a sweet little puss, isn't it? How Molly loves all God's little creatures! <laughs> Daddy, I know you don't need my help in Rondoon, but I've got to stop pulling my weight sometime. You're all grown up, aren't you? I am, Daddy. Courage now. Promise? Promise. Oh dear. Just then a crate of boys bursts open. One of the boys almost falls out, hanging upside down just over Molly's head. He stares at her. She stares at him. He has an air about him. The look of a boy who doesn't miss much or say much about it. Just get back in the box, you monkey. Something about the boy makes Molly feel like she just grew up a little. Daughter, a word. There isn't any treasure in the Queen's trunk, and what is in it has to be destroyed by orders of Her Majesty Queen Victoria. God save her. God save her! I'll have to move quickly before the King of Rangoon even knows I'm there. But how are you going to destroy it? Can you keep it a secret? I can. We can. <laughs> Qua, Queen, work, retreat, work. Click, click, Qua! Sorry? Click, click, qua? I think you mean. They're speaking dodo, a language known only to, well, dodos and a handful of very special humans. Dodo, a fat, clumsy bird, hence the Latin name Didus Ineptus. Known for its slothful pace, gritty appetite, and sense of entitlement, the dodo was fearless of humans and faced no real competition. An eerie mirror of the British Empire during its colonial zenith. However, it was those same traits that led to the extinction of the dodo, an eerie mirror of the British Empire after its colonial zenith, but thereby hangs another tale. And don't ever take this off or let anyone else touch it. You know what is in this amulet, Molly, and you know how to get you ever in trouble. But what if something happens to you? You need me on the walls. Too dangerous, I won't have it. But I want to be part of the mission! If you can't be British, young lady, then you can go straight home and back to school. Mrs. Bumbrick. No, no, please don't send me home. I'll be good, I promise. Shut the faucet, Molly. Rubber like a whale. When the whale's your oyster, be a woman. Yes, Nana. As soon as I'm done in Rondoon, we'll take a few weeks in the antipod. Hmm? Scare up some rare birdies. I might even teach you to speak porpoise. Yes, Daddy. There's my little star catcher. Only an apprentice. If I were the star catcher, I'd be on the walls with you. Slight hears that word. Star catcher. But a cannon is fired from the deck of the wasp. <laughs> Patience, Robert. Keep a keen eye, Mrs. Bumbray. Don't you worry, my lord. We'll be breaks to the boat. We'll meet again in Rundoon. Godspeed. Off you go, your lordship. TTF then. Comfy are we. That's nice. Now, out. Where are you? Good for nothing bucket of scum. Here. Lock these two in their cabin for safekeeping. I'm taking no chances. Oh, just a minute. I don't fancy no dainty daughters roaming around my deck now, Hobbit. With pleasure. The cabin could smell no worse than you. Can we have Kitty with us? Steer clear, pussy pet. Rip your hands clean off. Say the word, madam. I might let you out for a promenade. Do some petting of our own, eh? Don't trouble yourself, I'm sure. Come along, my girl. Don't worry, ma'am. I'll will see a safely stowed. Thank you, kind sir. No, thank you, kind lady. Your eyes are as green as the sea, and your hair is almost as wavy. Take me below, sir. Lock the silly cow in the junior suite. What are you sniggering at, you pickaroons? Shroud the hemp and let fly the famous Santa. You'll curse the day you were born. It's off to Rundoon, you fungus. There's profitable trade to be made in Rundoon. Well, first class ain't what it used to be. Of course, back in my salad days, I was a green girl bringing up rats in a big, breezy brownstone with bright. That was a tight spot, too, and hell on the household help, especially the kitchen boy, a lovely island lad who cooked a cunning cannelloni, plus a pasta fazool to make you drool. Oh, but oof, it made the master mad how his mistress moaned for his manicotti. He beat that boy something brutal, but 
The boy didn't say boo. Point is, we must be brave and button our beaks, or my name's not Betty Bumbrick. Now, you might well be afraid you'll never clap eyes on your father again. And it cuts me to the core, but never show that sorry snake the slightest sniff of fear. There are men who can smell it on you, Molly, and they make you pay. Oh, that's a stupid example if you're going to cry halfway through. Be a woman. <laughs> Situated, Miss. Mrs. Bombrick. Mrs. Oh, sorry to hear that. Oh, I was wed once, a dreadful business. Mr. Bombrick fell off the twig years ago, left me weirdoed at four thirty. Is that food? <laughs> I'm awfully hungry. This ain't for no ladies, it's for the pigs down the other end. Pigs? Really? May I help you feed them? My Molly loves all God's little creatures, you know. Not these creatures she don't. But don't you worry, cook's laying on some yummy meat in the galley. I'll escort you when it's up. Nothing too rich, pray. We girls must watch our waistline. Been thinking about getting in shape myself. Round is a shape. Sorry. <laughs> so true, not quite the specimen. No, I got flabby thighs, but Fortunately, my stomach covers him. Best be off, TTFN. <coughs> he's rough, but he's ready, that owl. He smelt like smell, too, but there was a whiff of hero about him. Mark my words. <laughs> Left the cabin door ajar. I can follow him and go feed the piggies. Ooh. May I, Nana, please? Wait, Molly, don't make me come after you. Oh, oh dear. Best be bringing back a bucket before Becky Bombrick blows a balloon at breakfast. <laughs> No, Slank put me on pig, you either rat bastard. Going down to the village to feed the swine. Go and save her. Snake eyes, snake eyes. Yahtzee. Oh, no. Monopoly. <laughs> Nothing. 
like you. It was all, eh, get it, get in the kitchen. <sighs> Who's the leader here? Who wants to turn up? Molly Asta. Dr. Pretorius back home says I have an extraordinarily high level of brain power. Well, if you're so smart, how come you're stuck on this dirt bucket? I'm not stuck. I'm going to meet my father and run to him. He has important things to do. Well, we have important things to do. No, we don't. I'm the leader, and I say we got some things. <laughs> He's not the leader. You. You. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 13. I'm 13. Wait. I just remembered. Today's my birthday. I'm 15. <laughs> <laughs> if today's your birthday and you were 13, then you'd be 14. I ain't celebrate my numbered birthday. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It doesn't matter how old you are. I'm still the leader. The leader has to be a boy. Hey, up and on to the ship, we get some proper food. I can lead you that, which would make me the leader. Proper food? Really? Just tell me your names. Why should we? Only that if you have names, they serve you meat. Oh, I'm Ted! I'm Ted! I'm Ted! But I call him Tubby because he's food obsessed. I'm not food obsessed. Do you write poems about pie? To pass the time. Hide beans in your blankets. It's a blood sugar thing. A thing. <laughs> At the mirror's whisper of. Get this. Sticky pudding. Oh, sticky pudding. It's so good. Like I said, food <laughs> obsessed. I'm Prentice. I'm in charge here. Heaven knows, Ted. The more you claim leadership, the more to lose you. Oh, snap. And what are you, boy? Leave me alone. Sorry. Don't take it personally. He's rude to everybody. It's why he gets beatings. And why he's got no friends. <laughs> Go on. Tell her your name, why don't you? What's so funny? Thanks, Ted. He doesn't have a name. Been orphaned too long to remember. <laughs> but Grumpkin calls him Mule. Go on, you and your stupid names, go follow some stupid girl. Like we need your permission, friendless. It doesn't cost anyone to be nice, charmless. What about food? You can be, like, temporary leader, but only till we eat. Fair warning, boy, I shall expose you utterly. As no one had ever shown the slightest interest in him before, the boy's eyes began to sparkle, and the lure of competition wiped some of the misery from his face. Right. Follow me. Right. Follow Mother. Molly. That's what I said. Uh, follow Mother. Molly. <laughs> the boy may have wished to be alone, but he didn't really mean it. As the sparkle in his eyes fades, the strange sounds in the dark make him remember the orphanage. Make him think about... Where's that mule? Here, sir. You are all shades of Nazi mule. Oi, look at this filth. Don't hit me, sir. Seth this dirty word. A mule afraid of his own shadow. Be a man. Thank you, Mr. Grumpkin. And cover yourself. Disgrace the mother that left you. Oh, for the wings, for the wings. You watch, or you're next. At the mention of mother, the boy hears a wisp of a song he could barely remember and sees the shadow of a home he hoped he might have. Father and son. Mother and child, and even with so little grounds for hope, Still he believed, despite his distress and sorrow, that one day, such a home would be his. Home. Orphan rule number one. Life is meant to be horrible. Rule number two. There are no orphans in heaven. Rule number three. Mrs. Grumpkin's ugly. <laughs> Anyone who lost is dead. Mother. Mother. Come on, you! Last chance! We ask us do not leave boys behind. We shift our attention now to the other ship, barreling due south at a brisk 12 knots. That fine British frigate, the Wasp. Where Molly's father, Lord Astor, has been ushered roughly below deck. Captain Scott's cabin, Your Lordship. Do go in. Awfully cramped for a captain's portion. No frills on a frigate, sir. Sanchez, pull the door to. There's a good fellow. Where's the captain, Lieutenant? I'm no lieutenant. I told a, a small lie. Unthinkable. 
British never lie. But pirates do, don't we, boys? Yeah! I demand to see Captain Scott. Why didn't you say so? Presto, Scatto. What? Robbie? How dare you, sir? Release this man! I'll take that key to that treasure trunk of yours. You'll have to kill me first. Well, I was going to kill you second, but <laughs> I'm flexible. Oh, a foul and nasty mood. What are you all about? Pirates, sir. This ship is now a pirate ship. Your British crews in chains below. There have been no pirates in these parts for a hundred years. We've been keeping a low profile. And you're the captain, I suppose? I, sir? I, sir. You, sir. I, sir. Not me, sir. It's me, sir? That's me, sir, but no captain I, sir. You lie, sir. Oh, no, sir. The devil himself's in charge hereabouts. The devil, you said? The Prince of Darkness, our satanic supervisor. Foul and nasty with a cloven hoof. And how might one identify him in a crowd? By his legendary cookie duster, that's how. Whiskers? By his legendary mouth bell, that's how. Well, does he have a name? The pirate captain they call. Black Stash! <laughs> Everyone who's not in England gets to see my facial hair. <laughs> now, you're likely wondering, can the fellow before you be entirely evil? Can no compassion uncrease this furrowed brew? Brown. Brow. <laughs> well, fret not, mon frere, I'm a romantic. There's a poet in these pirate veins, and so I plug in to the muse. But how to do it? What style to use? Iambic? Mm, box office poison. <laughs> Haiku? <laughs> Samurai don't think so. Mind the cuticle, Smee! Hoopa! <gasps> Got it! <clears throat> the pirate with scads of panache wants the key to the trunk with the cash. Now, here's some advice, though I seem to be nice. I'll cut you! Split you up one side and down the other so you can watch your own stomach flop around on the deck. I say, Smee. <clears throat> You did tell the Lord I'm a bloodthirsty outlaw. Aye, Captain, but he still wouldn't give up the key. Well, we haven't got all night, Smee. People have paid for nannies and parking. <laughs> Stand aside. <laughs> I'll do it myself. Or I'm not. Or I'm not. Oh, what am I? Black they refer, of course, to this. The trademark nose brush of every man, woman, and child in my family, dating right back to the amoeba. Yet, for us, the face foliage is so much more than a lawn on the lips, sir. Tis what we are and why we are it. And when everyone else got out of the pirate business, Stuck it out, knowing one day my ship would come in. This is the day. This is the ship. Now, cough up the key, my lord. Not a chance, you spam faced fool bag. <gasps> oh! 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 Oh, is that my lord's coat you are holding? Well, I, Captain. Oh. Looks to be about your size. Ha! What the well-dressed tool bag is wearing this season? So calm at you thought, Captain. So very calm at you thought. Oh, I say, Smee. What is it the men call me? Nancy, sir. <laughs> no, the other thing. Oh, ruthless, heartless, peerless, guilty as charged. 
Now, give us the key. Never. Games are for children, Lord Aster. And I hate, I hate, I hate children! Bring it in, Gomez! It's Santa, sir. Just bring it in. Thanks ever so. From this moment onward, the wasp and everything aboard her belongs to me, <laughs> including this treasure Victoria thinks nobody knows about. <laughs> Silly old queen. God save her. Queen. God save her. Victoria. God save her. Banana. God. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> Here's two things. When I open this swag, I will be the single most significant pirate in the world. The solar system or other places yet to be discovered in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> That's only one thing. The second thing is a dilemma, a large one. Ooh, the Cadillac Escalade of dilemmas in point of fact. For a little bird tells me your darling daughter is sailing to Rundoon on the safer southern route upon the naval nerd. <laughs> the Neverland, sir. <laughs> the, the Neverland, sir. Naval nerd, never land. Same letters. I was close. I was pretty darn close. Splitting rabbits, really. Hairs. Splitting hairs, that too. <laughs> oh, just a sec. I know you love your Molly above rubies. Let's say you, we make a quick detour. Pluck her off the Neverland, and you can watch her die. Unless. You're feeling a weensy bit more amenable. <laughs> Love your locket, but what's in your pocket? Uh, done and dusted, kippers and custard. Here's the key, boys. Arrgh! My father, he's in trouble. Your neck thing is glowing and ringing. Don't ask me about that. I can ask where I want. I'm the leader. Lay off, apprentice. Come on, you have to tell. All right, listen. My father is going to undo on a secret mission for the queen. What's a mission? Molly, where are you, girl? Shh, down the stairway. Keep it quiet. Tell me again. What was it called? What we ate? Pork chops, pork salad, and pork belly pie. Greatest night of my life. Shh, there's more tomorrow if we don't get caught. Oh, pork, such a beautiful word. <laughs> Who's that pretty you again? Her next thing. No, it's coming from someplace else. Behind the store. Get away, boy. Don't open that cabin. Holy snakes. Cats flying? We ask you now to imagine a grown cat in flight. Suspended in air as if hanging by a string. Of course, the boys don't have to imagine because there they are, and there's the cat, and that cat is definitely flying. And those bells are definitely ringing. And that cabin is definitely glowing. Glowing, ringing, flying. It can only mean one thing. Star stuff. Star stuff. The queen's trunk must be in Slate's cabin. All right, nothing to see here. Move along. But, but the cat was no, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Tell me it's right. Your next thing was ringing and Slate's cat was totally hey. fine. You know what? It would be fun right now. How's about a bedtime story? What's that? Oh, ha ha. Very amusing. Oh my gosh, you poor things. You never had a bedtime story. This might sound kind of defensive. It's kind of hard to have a bedtime story when you don't have a bed. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to. Tell you what, you say sorry so easy. Like the rough patch is smoothed over, no hard feelings, everything's fixed. No, there's dark, a massive darkness in this world, and if you get trapped in that cave like us, well, it beats you down. Sorry can't fix it. Better to say nothing than sorry. When it's night, I'm too scared to sleep. 
I look through the cracks, you know, between the wood, nailed over the window, and I see all those little stars that I can't reach. And I think that in a hundred years, or two, or three hundred maybe, boys will be free, and life will be so beautiful that nobody will ever say sorry again, because nobody will have to. I think about that a lot. Well, that's more than he said in the last 13 years. <laughs> so bedtime stories, not a big priority, okay? No, it's not okay. I'm giving you one. It's a gift. Least I can do. Like, uh, Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty, that's a good one. You'll like it. There's a kiss in it. True love's kiss. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know what that is. Then I'll tell you. Come on, back to your cabin and I'll be mother. Now, the story of Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time, that's how they all stopped. Once upon a time, a beautiful baby was born. And that beautiful baby had a big, bushy handlebar. And it grew out as he grew up, and they both lived awfully ever after. <laughs> From this day forth, it's nothing but pleasure cruises and the odd America's Cup for me. <laughs> now, now, open and perpend. What is it? It's sand, sir. Sand? But that's impossible. When you say sand, do you mean the utterly worthless granular material one associates with the water's edge? Yes, sir. <laughs> I see. Perchance you think a treasure trunk sans treasure has got my piratical BVDs in a twist. <laughs> How wrong you are. Yes, I had hoped to be hip deep in diamonds, but they are a poor substitute for what I truly crave. A bona fide hero to help me feel whole. For without a hero, what am I? A, a, a pirate in part, a villain, ruthless but toothless. And then I saw you and I thought, Maybe, could it be, is he the one I've waited for? Would he, for example, give up something precious for the daughter he loves? But alas, he gives up sand. So, hero with treasure, very good. Hero, no treasure, doable. No hero and a trunk full of sand, not so. So much. So where's my treasure? What if they swapped the trunk? Swapped, you say? Oh, stupid ideas, me. Stupid, stupid. <gasps> swapped. Yes, right there on the dike. Deck. Deck. <laughs> In which case, the trunk with the treasure is aboard the Neverland. <gasps> Destiny check! What do we know about the Neverland? She's a slow ship, Captain. Oh, sadly slow. And what of our ship, the Wasp? We're fast, sir. Super fast. Which means we are leagues ahead of her by now, Einstein. Change of course, hard about. You are behind this swappery, Aster, or I'm the Queen of England. God save her. Shut up! I said hard about, Gomez! Is Santa Thur? Put the pedal to the metal, Gretel! Is Santa Thur? Burn the rubber, Bubba! I get me! Get the money, you know? Protest dog! Give it me, you shroom! You pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Now, juice it! The chase is on. The die is cast. The game's afoot. I want that treasure, boys. Catch me a Neverland! And as the 
princess slept, a thick forest grew up around the castle, keeping everybody out. Everybody but one man. Boys? The prince, right? The prince, yes, very good. He chopped his way to Sleeping Beauty, saw his true love, and kissed her just once, sweetly on the lips. Mm, pork. And true love's kiss broke the spell, and the princess found the prince, and they all lived happily ever after. The amulet again. Talk to me, Daddy. With the wasp racing for the Neverland, Leonard Astor clears his mind and tries to reach Molly. Daddy, are you there? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Daddy, the Queen's trunk is here! Aboard the Neverland! Not in English. Too dangerous. Oh, Daddy, please don't speak. Why? In. We what? No, like, not Dodo. Maya, Maya Reap. Parrots? A flock of parrots? Right, Maya Reap. Parrots are taking over your ship. What genius brought parrots? Pirates! We've been taken over by pirates! Pirates! Oh, that hard eye sandwich is so trippy! Molly! The wasp is bearing down on the Neverland. As soon as we reach you, steer clear of Blackstash and bring the trunk to me. I will! Don't let me down, daughter. This is your mission now. Yes, sir! Thank you, sir! Qua qua! Green! What are you doing? Sorry, what? Um, get below, boy. If Slank's need you on deck, he'll rear up like the fucking your next thing. No, it wasn't. I know what I saw. Well, well, there was a porpoise swimming alongside of the ship, and it was making those funny little noises that porpoises make. And so I thought that I make some funny little noises too. That's all. So you were talking to a fish. Porpoises are not fish. They're mammals, like you or Germans. <laughs> so then, how come your next thing glows and rings all by itself? It's for swimming. I'm a good swimmer. It's a swimming medal. Right. Swimming, sure. And what's star stuff? Decision. I'm going to trust you. Why? I'm just a boy. I know. Pity. You like the stars? Well, there they are. There's so many. They look safe, don't they? Sparkling up there like diamonds. I like them when they shoot across the sky. Shoom. Sometimes, pieces of them fall to earth. Little bits that look like sand. Can you keep a secret? I can. We, we can. Those little bits are star stuff. And the trunk in Slank's cabin is full of it. And there's some in here too, in case I'm ever in trouble. Star stuff? We see, no! It changes people if they touch it. How? Different ways, depending on what they want to be. So if somebody got their hands on the star stuff, and they're evil and greedy, like Genghis Khan, or they're hungry for world domination, like Caesar, or Napoleon, or, you know, Ayn Rand. <laughs> Who's that? Didn't they teach you anything in that orphanage? <coughs> was kind of busy trying not to die. Oh. Uh, so, if Star Stuff's so dangerous, why are you after it? Because I'm a star catcher. We have special powers that we use in secret to try and keep star stuff away from the tyrant to try to rule the world. You mean like Queen Victoria? God save her, and no, that's different. She doesn't need star stuff to rule the world. She's British. <laughs> so you're a, what is it? A star catcher. There's only six and a half of us on the planet. Six and a half? I'm still an apprentice. Okay, so prove it. What? Go on. Amazing with your special powers. It's not a magic show. I'm not like some magician guy. I mean, if you can't actually do anything. Fine, whatever. To have faith is to have wings. Whoa. Satisfied? So the cat was flying. Come on, I want to fly too, just like you and the cat. Get serious, will you? The star stuff has to be destroyed. You want me to destroy it? Don't be ridiculous. My father is going to throw it into the world's hottest active volcano, Mount Rolapeno. <laughs> Where's that? Run dude, wouldn't you know it? Problem is, King Zawolf would kill for even a thimble of star stuff. Hey, I can help. I'm going to be one of the king's new helpers, so when we get to Run Dune... You're not going to be his helper. You're going to be snake food. King Zawolf likes to 
to buy orphans and feed them to his snakes. So Grant can lie. King Zalbaf III is evil. He's the worst Zalbaf yet. Grown-ups always lie. It's all they ever do. You want to help? Then help me get that trunk to my father. Tell you what. Why, why should I help anybody? What's anybody ever done for me? You! Stay food? Really? I told you to stay in your crate, you orphan sludge. When we're exactly where you're going to tell us that we were snake? That's it. Bill Slank is drawing the line. I might not have been born with a silver spoon at me bum, but that don't mean I won't stir me tea with one. Ew. Ew. That's gross. Get for that, boy. He ain't going for that. He's going over. Let go. Let me go. Zorba promised me his whole bleeding fleet in exchange for that chunk in my cabin. Strong young flowing winds hit 34 knots. I hate grown ups. Now make like a kitten and take a long, long time to drown. Bottoms up, boy! Not overboard, please, I can't! Can't what? Swim! Here I am, boy! All be well! Hanging! Ship off the board bow for the Piper Jim! She could be the wasp! The wasp after us better tell Slank! Backstroke is my event, and I do so like to finish first. I would more well to school than anyone, except Daphne Cooper, but Daphne Cooper's a swat. Deep breaths. There we go. <coughs> you saved my life, of course. Why? Because I'm the leader, but you don't even like me. The leader can't go about saving only the people she likes. The leader has to be a boy. Only if the boy knows there's more important things in this world than saving his own neck. Like what? Like saving someone else's. They figured out I swapped the trunks. Like, we need the wasp to turn around and catch us quick. It's the wasp, all right? It's that loom, she's a fast ship. We'll never outrun a frigate, Captain. We can bleed and well try. Build the wasp ball. Here's the breeze now, you little tracks. Watch your trunk, let it ask, so you'll have to catch me first. Follow the winds, we will hide the starboard. Starboard? So that ain't the one with the big P, is it, Captain? Bring me the Brandon Iron! The boy spins the ship's wheel for everything he's worth. He's changed no course! Straight for the Can 
take the lad? She's only a ship full of thoughts. Now, boss? Now. Run up the Jolly Roger. <gasps> Pirates! Come back here, you cowards! Hello, Neverland. I think this trunk belongs to you, and you have something of ours. Save your trunk, Bill. Get the trunk to Zorba, and you'll be too posh to push. Crazy weather, huh? <laughs> what are you? 
mum's lips. <laughs> Is that the queen's trunk you're sitting on? Oh, yeah, totally. The queen's trunk. Molly Ashton told me to protect it. From who? From pirates like you. But we have all the fun. You do? Absolutely. A swash, a bit of buckle, you'll love it more than bread. Now, give us the trunk and join the party. Uh, appellation, please. Your name, bub? No name, orphan. Oh, you are more at sea than Columbus, boy. If you were a pirate, you'd have a proper name. You could do that? I'm the boss, ain't I? What about Blue Beard Bob? Um, Long John Larry? Mm, ah, we hung a bloke from the yard arm a week ago Wednesday. Pirate Pete. That's available. Pirate Pete. Ooh, good strong name is Peter. Like a rock. That's what you'll be, boy. <laughs> My rock. Now, give me the trunk. Peter. Yeah, I like it. Iconic as the moonwalk in a Michael Jackson video. Now give me the trunk. <laughs> and what would I do? You would star in me nasty crew. Uh, calamity, fraternity. You need to connect, boy. Peter. You need to connect, Peter. No man is an archipelago. Now, be a good Peter and give your captain his great big treasure. Say it again! You blew it, Stash. The Queen's trunk is safe on the walls. We did it, Holly. We saved the treasure. We saved the world. You're killing my buzz, boy. To which I say, die! Not again! Not again! The toy's gone overboard! Molly, bring me the trunk! Oh, I can't swim! But that is the point of the trunk! This time I read the order. Bring the trunk to me! This trunk floats, boy! My name's Peter! Peter! I like it! Yeah, me too! There's an island, Peter! Get to the island! Molly, go!
Molly, wait! <coughs> no, you're not supposed to sleep. You're supposed to be going in the trunk. Oh, what if she came and... I hear what you said, Molly. Drag it right up a mountain. Nope. No Molly. So bright. Oh, you know what that is? That must be the sun. I'm feeling you, sun. And check it out. Space like air. Huh? I'm finally free. Free, free. I've got freedoms. Whatever I want. Whoa, hey, bird. What's up? <laughs> Me? Let's see. Save the world. Got a name, not too shabby. I just, I wonder if Teddy and Prentice made it off the ship before it sank. I mean, how weird would it be if they, <coughs> please let them be okay. Bird, let's make a pact. I don't leave you and you don't leave me, deal? No, come back, please. I don't want to be alone, come back. Hey, fine. No Prentice, no Teddy, no Molly. This is perfect. Nobody's chasing after me with a stick. I get to be a boy for a while. Nothing between me and the sky. I gotta get out of here. Whoa! Sorry. Did you want to be alone? No. Good answer. Thank you. You ready for this? Teddy floats. We jumped overboard and I held on to Teddy and the two of us bobbed all the way here. Prentice <laughs> Snowden. I got one now. Peter. Solid. Whatever. Look, way out there. It's a wasp. You see it? It's still one piece. You see where this is going? Oh, where's Mother? Her, look. Her name is Mom and she probably drowned. No, 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 no. no. She dove off the ship before it sank. She's like a real swimmer. Or maybe she's on the watch. Or maybe she's floating on what's left of the Netherlands. Ride this wreckage, Romeo. Get us to shore and make it fast. Put you want speed, find me a sail. We'll end up in China drifting like this. And I'm in no mood for moose shoot out. Try it once. Wind through me like the wind to wind in Wessex. <laughs> Maybe she's down there in the jungle. I say we wait for her under. Come on, everybody help me hide the truck and we, we can find some branches down the beach. At some point, we're gonna have to find some food. Branches. What we need are branches. Oh, I think I found something. Oh, sweet. Ow! Branches, branches, guys got the Jones for branches? To build a raft, you know? To float out to the walks. That way, that way Molly's father will have to take us. Where? Home. Come on, everybody hold hands and no one gets lost. Clear? Crystal? Ew, your hands all sweaty. Yeah, cause perspiration is the mark of true leadership. <laughs> Are we good? Yes. yes. You there, Peter? Here, you there, Ted? Present! You there, Prentice? Prentice, you there? Teddy, you hanging on with Prentice? Teddy, guys! Where is everybody? Island in record time. 
I'm awfully glad I saved the boy, even if Daddy's furious. Saving the world's a bit abstract for a 13-year-old. Putting human face on it makes it more jolly. Oh, this train door is so irksome. Now, I really must fetch Daddy's trunk and bring it back to the wall. My first ever mission will be my last. Don't worry, Peter, wherever you are, I'll find you. Primi Tronzo, Dopo Gabinetto. Hello, I am king of this island, and you boys are my prisoners. Lasagna! You three will do nicely. You speak English? If I must prefer it, yo hablé espanol. But you're savages. We mollusks are no savages. I know where savagery is, boy. When I was young man, English landed here, took me to your island in chains. Many long years I served as kitchen slave in not so great Britain, until by the kindness of fate, a shipwreck brought my father back to Morris Island. Yes, in your language, my name is Fighting Kran. This is my son, Talking Clan. My son shall wear this hat once worn by my brutal British master. For years I was his kitchen slave. He beat me raw, but I was brave. And one day put him in his grave with a plate of poisoned pasta. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Come, it is time. Time? Feeding time. Feeding time? Finally! Not where you eat, piggy boy, where you are eating. You must answer to the law. The law of Mr. Grin. Who is Mr. Grin? We worship him, and he protects us from foreign troublemakers. Come, we feed you now to vicious crocodile. Oh. Wait, uh, please don't feed us to any crocodile. First, take us to Mr. Grin. Crocodile, ease, Mr. Grin. Pasta. Uh, did you give me a great gift? Auntie Pasta. You said gift. Ah, uh, yeah, bedtime story. Sleeping Beauty, right guys? Sleeping Beauty. The thing is, I can it off before the end. Hopefully they will too, we get out of here. We give you a story, you let us live, you leave your island. Deal? Okie dokie, but if I am not entertained, it's Mr. Green for all of you. Assume the position. You have one minute. One minute? What am I supposed to do in one minute? I can't transform! I can't inhabit! Bring me the holy relic of my captivity! Here, mighty father, the kitchen timer! <laughs> one minute starting... Now! Um, okay, one at a time. What's upon a time? That's how they all start! Upon a time! Upon a time! Tick tock, tick tock. Hungry, Mr. Green. Okay, okay. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful baby princess and an evil witch with a curse. And the curse was very terrible. For every time the baby cried, the whole kingdom would fall asleep.
stay hidden, Molly. You abused the concept of the Theta Collective. It was too much for me. Molly, 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 Molly. Although Ted has real talent. Hey, I have talent. They liked me. They really liked me.
me. You've been hitting the three bean couscous again. Find I, Captain. Oh, I've got it. Oh, Captain. Lucky for me, you saved your ukulele, Smee. Captain Stash. Siren song is what we need, and you will be the luscious siren. <laughs> your reptilian ham. Teacher, 
That's what I'm called. And yes, I speak English. I know your name is Peter. I know a lot of things. Where am I? In a hurry. That's right. I was trying to outrun the mollusk natives. Yeah, they were trying to kill me and I just wanted to get home. Yeah, life is complicated. I wanted to build a raft to get to Molly's father, but... You don't need a raft to get home, and you don't need the wasp. All you need is star stuff. How do you know about... Listen to teacher. When you rode the trunk to this island, seawater seeped inside. Then the star stuff in the trunk enchanted the water. Then the water enchanted the fish in the wake of the trunk. Then the waves... But how do you know I'm that... I'm not finished. Then the waves washed the water right into this grotto where I was swimming. So you used to be a fish? Scotch salmon. This is way cooler, FYI. <laughs> the star stuff will change you too. It makes you what you want to be. What if I just want to be a boy for a while? Can I just be a boy? Well, I suppose once you sit in the star stuff. Yeah, then what? Sky's the limit. You could even fly yourself home, maybe, just like you dreamed. Kind of family. In which case, you're going to need something. A name. Instead of Peter? In addition to. A family name. And we've come up with a good one, haven't we? And in the water, or in the grotto, or both, a voice, or an echo, or both, seems to answer. <sighs> what are you, boy? I'm Peter. <sighs> Pan? You mean, like, in the kitchen? You are just too cute. I mean two things, actually. First is fun and frolic, anarchy, mischief, all the things a boy likes to Okay, do. Peter Pan, yeah, I like it. There, you're changing already. You said Pan means two things. What's the second? Shouldn't you be on your way? Molly's going to beat you to that trunk. Molly! Molly. Trunk! I told him you'd come. 
and I was waited, and then it was the dark, and the rain, and I was just so worried. I'm here. Do you think I've changed? You're dirtier. <laughs> so, I've been meaning to ask you about the, uh, about this, about the thing. What thing? The kiss, okay, the kiss. What kiss? The one you gave me. Oh, the kiss. What kiss? She said. Well, what about it? <laughs> well, no one's ever wanted to give me one, that's all. Want to? Want to? I didn't want to. What? I was well, about to be eaten alive. alive. And you grabbed me. Oh, for heaven's sake, such a fuss. Didn't you like it? No, it was. You didn't like it. You didn't like it. Now you're telling me you didn't like it. Oh, unbelievable. I didn't say I didn't like it. What are you saying? I guess I'm saying, I guess I'm asking. You stop that right now. I won't answer to any such question. You're inclined to the sentimental, and that's all well and good for a boy. But the fact is, inclined towards what? We girls can't afford to be sentimental. We must instead be strong. And when I marry, marry? You thought I was asking you to, not you, you swat. Oh, the ego. And when I marry, I shall make it very clear to this person that sentimentality is not on the calendar. He will have to lump it or leave it. And if he should leave, I'll stay a spinster and pin my hair up and volunteer weekends at hospital. <laughs> I will love words with her own meaning, like hyacinth and piccadilly and onyx. And I'll have a good old dog, I'll think what I like, and I'll be a part of a different sort of family. You know, with friends who understand that things are only worth what you're willing to give up for them. Even if I, in the face of death, I may have, you know, wanted to. I didn't say that. Got it. Good. Wow. You know, now that you're here, Peter, I might just rest my eyes for a little. No, Molly, no, the leader has to be a... Uh, uh, yes, Peter. The mollusk got it, remember? The sun? Oh, oh, what's for breakfast? Did he say the sun? But if you could see the sun coming out, if you could see the sky at all. We well, must be very near the beach. Come on, boys, we made it. <laughs> Heroic. Ruffians? How dare 
there, you madam. We are no ruffians. Why, we've never even been to Buffia. I don't care what you are. I assure you. What I am, madam, I'll tell you. to kill this woman until she is dead. <laughs> and Alfred, too, unless you leave that trunk with me and my nasty crew. Stay right where you are, and I'll see things go easy for you with my father. Oh, your daddy is not here, dearie. And there are more of us than there are of you. And there's more of us than anybody. Pursuit dog! Daddy! Captain Scott, not you too! No English move! Ronnie? Betty, Betty, is that you? Betty! The mistress wants more of your manicotti! And a pasta mazool! To make you true! Betty Bombrake, it's really you! This woman only English kinds me when I was kitchen slave! Be a prince, Prony, and let no master mix! You are English, so I'll choose my words carefully. No. But, Prony! Your English invade our island, and now all nature's laws are for Kasha! Because of the contents of this trunk, Your Highness, release my father, and we'll let will take the trunk off your island. Nature restored. Mollusks live happily ever after. Happily ever after, my kebab knife. You, <laughs> kitty cat, bring the trunk to me, or I cut the savage's throat. That's a terrible choice. I have a sacred duty. Take your time. I'll count to three. <laughs> three! Three! What's that? An echo? Echo! echo. echo. Oh, excellent effect. <laughs> the stash is cunning! 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 The stash is beguiling! Guiling! Guiling! The stash is supreme! I don't think so! You! Peter Pan! He's alive! We're safe! Frost and Perry, Peter! A talking coolie Balestra! <laughs> and now we arrive in the belly of the beast! Go, Teddy! Yo, feet fast! <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? Mm. 
Moose nuggets, gold and diamonds do not dissolve. But star stuff does. Isn't that right, Daddy? But actually, the molecular structure of star stuff begins to break down. Starbucks, Starbucks, what, what Starbucks? <laughs> Just 
when you least expect it, there I'll be. The stash right beneath your lips. <laughs>
Here, had a hero. Where when you get home? Do you remember? Molly now, the tide won't wait. I want you to look after Prentice and Teddy. Five more minutes, please. A bedtime story. Tell me, Molly, tell me. There'll be other times, won't there? Come on, see, she wants to stay. She can't. But I don't want it to end. Soon, Peter, you'll forget, and it won't hurt anymore. No, it's supposed to hurt. That's how you know it meant something. <coughs> Peter, you're going to remember everything, every single detail. And you're the better leader. Really? No. <laughs> you're not going to be mad at me forever, will you? Go on, get lost. I'm bound to grow up, see? What, what, what will we do? Be friends. In a year, that'd be hard. In five years, it'd be silly. In 20 years, it'd just be sad. You sound older already. That thing you did against impossible odds, that's what the two of you will always have. The thing we did against impossible odds. Yes, Peter, I wanted to. As Peter watches the wasps get smaller and smaller, he wonders about his adventure, about Molly, and about that kiss. It would be the only moment that Peter would teach her, on the top of the roller coaster on the verge of becoming what he'd always hated, a grown-up. And then, as promised, Peter began to forget and stayed right where he was, the outsider. Molly, true to her word, would remember everything until one day, many years later, she stared out the nursery window, watching Peter fly off with her daughter in tow. And this grown-up Molly would comfort her new Nana, the good old dog who tended the children. Don't worry, Nana darling. I always hoped that if Peter ever returned, my daughter would go with him. And once Wendy grows up, I hope she will have a little girl. A little girl that will go off with him in turn. Oh, for the wee, so, we go on, wee, on, dear Nana. As long as children are young and innocent. And rude and juvenile and heartless. Past all the jostles of life. Till we fly back home. Home. Help! Help! That bird bell thing is after us! Keep it away! It's turning in my brain! Over here, I'm the one you want! Get it away! Get it away! Okay, okay, calm down. I think... I think it wants me to race you to the grotto. Uh, stash sliced it open! It's hard to believe you're still single. <laughs> Wait. I think... I can do what? What'd you say? What'd you say? Have faith is to have wings. Wait, did you say grotto? How would you like to be just a boy for a while? The star stuff water can do that. It makes you what you want to be. A lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is going to be one awfully big adventure. All right, you said it. Ready? Ready. Ready. Set. 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 Go.
Uh, recently, my friends have started calling me the absentee director because, frankly, I prefer to be in the back and letting the students get it all the blocks. But tonight's special because three of these students will not be returning after this year. And so I would like to honor Izzy Martin.